Hello race fans, welcome back from the summer break to Spa Francorchamps for the Belgian Grand Prix qualifying of 2023. We're about to race through the Arden Forest for what is no doubt going to be an exceptional qualifying as it usually is around Spa Francorchamps. Here we go, here's your practice report for the Belgian Grand Prix. Keto Watanabe, very, looking very good, hoping to recover after a terrible way to end. Uh, the first half of the season in Britain. He gets into the top five again, but Masushita still struggling with the car. However, he does bring it back at the end of practice three and gets pretty close to Watanabe. Although, actually, there's a, about a second gap between the two, mainly due to the fact that it started to rain during that session. Here's the setup that Watanabe will be running this weekend around Spa. And uh, due to the huge amount of reliability problems that Toyota have faced, they have brought in a slew of reliability upgrades to their power unit. However, as a result of that, they have fallen back in the pecking order. Ferrari's car now seems to be faster, and Alpine have jumped Williams. And no rain is anticipated to happen in the important sessions being qualifying and the race for this Grand Prix. Through the bus stop she came, Keita Watanabe goes, on this set of soft tires, DRS wide open, he's about to barrel down the start finish line, there's only fourth. Around he goes, two seconds up on his previous time, this is a stonking lap from Watanabe, and he tops the session, P1 at the end of Q1, doesn't mean much, but he's a tenth ahead of the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc, and if he can keep that pace up, he's no doubt going to do a worldly of a lap in the coming sessions. Matsushita makes it another Q2 appearance and Russell into Q2. Bus stop chicane, Watanabe gets the car. He's always sliding a bit out of that corner. That's probably losing him some time. P5. He's in the drop zone, is Watanabe, edging on the drop zone, trying to qualify on the medium compound tires, but his time does not improve. He undoubtedly have to start in the softs. Soft tires on, a second up on his lap time is Watanabe. His qualifying comes to a close. DRS wide open, crosses the line. Where's that put him? And it puts him P8 overall. So he makes it into Q3. Masushita out of qualifying. And however, the Mercedes and one of the Red Bulls qualified on the medium tire. So they're going to have the ideal strategy. Watanabe through the bus stop chicane. Rounding the final corner, and it's just a straight shot to the line. Where's that going to put him overall still last? New set of soft tires for Watanabe. He's 7 tenths up. Not that much of an improvement in comparison to previous laps. Crosses the line, and it's P9 overall. So Watanabe, not a great qualifying session, but compared to his last one in Silverstone, it's not bad. Max Verstappen takes pole position, though, and he'll have the advantage heading into Turn 1. Cloudy skies, but nothing can douse, dampen the mood of the multitude of fans who have come to watch another Belgian Grand Prix. This is an historic circuit on the calendar, a fan favorite who can't forget all the runs we've had through Eau Rouge and up Radion. We've had some exceptional moves for drivers who want to dare to push the limit. And here we go. Here's your the track map for uh, the Belgian Grand Prix. This is, we're going through the Arden Forest here, and this is a very, very long lap. One of the longest on the calendar, and it will test our drivers with a variety of corners. And of course, who can forget that of uh, the beautiful complex of corners, this Eau Rouge and Radion, where we'll see some exceptional performances. And here we are, here's your starting grid for the Belgian Grand Prix. And Sergio Perez has been on a run of form lately, making three podiums in the last three races. Can he add to his podium total? And of course, Valtteri Bottas seizing the lead of the championship into, into Silverstone. Hopefully, he wants to extend his lead heading into this race over his teammate Lewis Hamilton, who started the year off so well, but Bottas seems to be gunning for three titles in a row, which will put him on par with a certain Brazilian driver, his name, Ayrton Senna. Let's see if Bottas can make the moves done around this historic circuit. And here we go, here's your starting grid for the Belgian Grand Prix of 2023. And Max Verstappen takes pole position over Valtteri Bottas. The Finn will hope to make some moves through a source. And let's see if he can make it. Though Verstappen will no doubt be defending hard. And it's Hamilton third, Perez fourth, Leclerc fifth, and Sainz sixth for Ferrari. Lando Norris seventh, Keita Watanabe gets 
promoted to 8th place, Fernando Alonso 9th, and Esteban Ocon gets promoted to 10th, Gasly 11th, Matthew Shita 12th, Giovinazzi 13th, and Sebastian Vettel in 14th place, then Daniel Ricciardo with a grid penalty in 15th, alongside George Russell, Lance Stroll 17th, Nicholas Latifi 18th, Yuki Tsunoda 19th, Zhou Guan Yu 20th, Sato 21st, and Nikita Mazepin down the order in 22nd place. And here we are, here's your starting grid, let's see what our drivers can get off to when the lights go out. Lights out, and it's off to the races for our drivers, and Max Verstappen cuts off the fin of Valtteri Bottas. Into the source we go. There's a big dive from Lando Norris, and oh, he hits the wall! He hits the wall, but he hits the Mercedes, and Hamilton's around, and that's been chaos at the start through the opening corner. There's a gaggle of cars. There's a car park back there, and undoubtedly, no surprise, the safety car is out at the end of just one corner. Let's look at the race start. You can see here, just from Guatanabe's rear uh, front wing, and Lando Norris, uh, he's a little audacious dive bomb. We remember in Britain, he almost, he took uh, Guatanabe sideways. Norris is really sort of pushing the limit, and unfortunately, he just seems to be going for gaps that aren't there. You can see, I think he misjudges just how close the wall where the Rolex uh, sponsors are. It's just not good enough for the McLaren driver. I mean, that is seriously going to hinder his race and it's definitely front wing damage you saw the end plate go off here's fernando alonso's view and here's the car park developing you can see the collision and hamilton will undoubtedly have some form of side pod or floor damage here's lando norris's cam you can see he gets squeezed out a bit by watanabe he got off the line very well he dives on the inside but yeah i think he just miscalculates where that wall is uh, f it up i, I was too, way too close and that's definitely going to be a penalty for Lando Norris as well. This is Lewis Hamilton's view of the incident. Trying to make a move on Bottas down the inside. He almost gets the move done, but there's Lando pushing him aside and completely ruining the Britain's race. Literally just came alongside me and turned in and hit me. And um, hopefully there's not too much damage to that Mercedes. And Daniel Ricciardo is in 20th now. Let's see what happens. He gets not a very good launch off the line. Almost gets taken up by Jewel. There's a huge dive from Stroll and the Aston Martin. And there, that's how Ricciardo got to the back of this grid. Safety car coming in at the end of this lap. The sun is out over Belgium. Belgium and hopefully we can get this, this race formally underway as Max Verstappen leads our drivers through the bus stop chicane and it's a terrible start from Watanabe on the grid. He gets left behind by Leclerc and now he's undoubtedly going to be vulnerable to the, the Alpine of Esteban Ocon. Why through a source to go? Watanabe is unable to get the heat into his soft tires and now Ocon has closed the gap. We're going down into Eau Rouge now going up Radion. Remember the drama that Esteban Ocon caused in 2017 of his teammate Sergio Perez at that very same complex of corners? But he's barreling down the camel straight we go and this is going to be an audacious move without drs can esteban Ocon get the move done it doesn't seem like it just so close though that alpine has been rapid in a straight line all weekend as watanabe is struggling through the through lacon and now he's going to see if he can get that oh and there's esteban Ocon going for a gap again that doesn't seem to be there he gets the car sideways slightly through Brussels, but he just manages to get it through no name corner we go and watanabe still struggling to get heat into those tires are edging toward puan now and watanabe is going wide he just doesn't have the grip Ocon is all over him and he's just waiting for a little mistake from the from the toyota what can he do as watanabe goes wide through turn 13 into 14 wide again and that opens the door to Ocon. Who pushes him onto the exit curb here we go through the second sector and watanabe is back on him this is some thrilling racing off the restart and all the fighting that's going on between akon and watanabe is extending the gap to leclerc in fourth place here we go barreling down blanchiment down around the outside we go and that is an audacious move side by side flat out for watanabe akon gives him the squeeze on the exit curb diving down the inside into the bus stop chicane we go watanabe is inside line estimate akon is a lock up on the front right and we'll, uh, watanabe will take the advantage around the outside and that was a thrilling lap battle and leclerc pits verstappen pits and he's pinning onto a set of soft tires so that's going to be in a very aggressive two-stop strategy for verstappen no Apologies, Verstappen's on the hard tires, so it's going to be a one-stop. Barreling down towards Blanchimon, and Ocon's looking to get another move done down the inside. Watanabe gives him the space, but squeezes him slightly. He gets onto the grass, though. There's a thing that might have been contact between him and the Alpine. And Watanabe, down the inside, he goes into 
the bus stop chicane, and that is moved, done and dusted. It's Ocon. Is he going to enter the pit lane? He is, but Watson and Ivy's continue on, continuing on, hopefully trying to get the overcut on Esteban Ocon. The sky has become gray again. Watanabe seems to be pinning his lap. And it's a little mistake as Hamilton barrels down the inside. And considering that he got taken out by Lando Norris on lap one, that is a supreme effort to get back into third place. Albeit the safety car did probably help his chances as the Mercedes have been absolutely rapid around Spa this weekend. But, uh, but Keita Watanabe behind was Hamilton. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to see the fight that we wanted to see as he's pitting on this lap onto prob probably a set of medium tires. Can the mediums make it to the end? All the drivers, even the medium tire runners who pit early on are on the hards. So is Watanabe going for a gamble, trying to get those so those steps softer than probably the rest of the field is going to run? Let's wait and see as he enters the pit lane. And yes, those are the yellow walled medium tires waiting for him by the to Toyota boys and girls. It's an average stop, 2.5 seconds. But it seems, yes, Ocon passes him. So the uh, under overcut has not worked out for Watanabe. And in fact, on cold tires, he's going to get ambushed by Ocon's teammate, Alonso, Fernando Alonso. And if there's any man you don't want behind you heading down the Camel Straight, it is a Fernando Alonso through Eau Rouge. Up Raddy on we go, and down the Camel straight, hitting towards the late Concha Kane, and Watanabe does have DRS, and he's going to try to use a slipstream of Science, who's a sitting duck on this straight, to try and outpace Fernando Alonso into late Con we go, and that's the move, hopefully, position, hopefully, held by Watanabe. He's a little wide, through the exit of late Con, heading down towards Bruxelles now, very, very easy to oversteer, through this corner, it, what does Watanabe go through no name and a little wide he gets a little upset by the exit curve through on the exit of Brussel and now Fernando Alonso stop his side he's not gonna show and make a move through Puan he is down the inside on the hard tires and that is left Watanabe speechless around the bus stop she came and go Fernando Alonso has DRS but Watanabe's got a bit more slipstream from Alonso what's he gonna do down the inside into the source surely not and that is an audacious dive bomb but Fernando Alonso the wily old fox pulls the old switcheroo on the Toyota they're barreling down towards late the Eau Rouge this is gonna be a battle of wits as there we go Watanabe gets the move done and dusted that was a brave move from the Japanese Closing in on Carlos Sainz now, and oh, it's a little hot-headed on the brakes, and then he goes very deep into Lacan, and that opens the door for Fernando Alonso. There's a bit of contact between the two, tire walls banging between these two drivers, and the fists are out, the elbows are out. Let's see what we can do. Alonso trying to put the elbows out through down the inside into Bruxelles, but Watanabe's got the grip on the outside, and he holds position. This is S Carlos Sainz on Esteban Ocon, heading towards... Uh, Lacan, Esteban Ocon defends the inside, but Carlos signs around the outside of the Alpine, and that is an audacious move from the Ferrari driver. Here goes Watanabe, down the Kemmel, down Blanchiment, down the inside of Esteban Ocon, that was very far back. Who's the king of the late breakers? Now we ask, as Watanabe gets the move done on Esteban Ocon, down the inside. Let's look at the replay here. You can see Ocon just has no response. He just doesn't see him coming. He just comes out of nowhere. Does uh, Kato Watanabe does, does, does go off track though. And Ocon will undoubtedly be on the radio to try and contest that with his team. Here we go. Hedging towards Carlos Sainz now. DRS and ERS deployed. Down the Kemmel straight we go. And Sainz the sitting duck without DRS. Will he try to defend this move into Lacan? Down the inside goes Watanabe. Does he keep it on track? And he just... Barely by the marge, slim as the margins, keeps it on the road, up at the P6. Let's see that move again. Look at this dive bomb. There's at least a car length, two car lengths between them. And Watanabe just able to slow the car down and keep it, not only that, on track too. And Carlos Sainz tries to see him moving a bit towards the inside. Tries to pull the switcheroo on him, but it doesn't work out. And that is some expert car positioning by Watanabe to hold this place. Through Puan we go, and he goes a little wide onto that rise curve, and that's unsettled the car balance, surely. And now Carlos Sainz is going to try and retake the place. W uh, Watanabe squeezes him through turn 13, but through turn 14 he goes a little wide, and Sainz and the Ferrari retakes the place. Down the Kemmel straight. Again, are we going to see another lap overtake? This is a very easy move, easier with uh, the fact that he's so much closer to Carlos Sainz into Lake Caen. And there we go. Place done and dusted for Kato Watanabe. He's up at the P6. It's Nikita Mazepin with a reliability failure out of the Grand Prix. 
There's the move for the race lead, Bottas, in the slipstream of Max Verstappen, DRS deployed. Can he seize the lead from one of his championship rivals? Let's see, down the inside, on the softs is Bottas, so he's gone for an aggressive two-stop strategy, probably, around the outside of Verstappen, and on those hards, the Red Bull driver had no chance against the Finn. Ba Valtteri Bottas, he left from the... left. For the summer break with a win. He comes back with a win around Sunny Spa. Valtteri Bottas takes the Belgian Grand Prix with an exceptional win. It's a double podium for Red Bull though, so that will help their Constructors' Championship chances. And Keita Watanabe, P6 overall, and that is a very respectable performance from the Toyota driver, which hopefully makes up for all the mistakes that he's made in Silverstone last time out. Daniel Ricciardo though, a great recovery drive after a first lap inconvenience caused by his teammate. And Valtteri Bottas extends his lead in the Drivers Championship. And that is surely going to play into his hands as we head into the later half of this season. Watanabe sixth overall though. And Charles Leclerc, the Ferrari's good day in Lando Norris. Although the first lap contact does manage to make it back into P8. Fernando Alonso and Esteban Ocon, double Alpine point scorer. And Masushita un is unable to repeat on its point scoring performance in Silverstone. Watanabe makes it past Daniel Ricciardo for P6 though in the Drivers' Championship and Charles Leclerc jumps Mick Schumacher who's still without a seat and is currently occupying the Toyota Reserve drive and Test Driver role. No change really in the Constructors' Championship as the champagne sprays. We've returned from the summer break with an absolutely cracking race and we'll hopefully see you next time as we head to the Russian Grand Prix around the Sochi Autodrome and hopefully you'll join us for that race. But until then, that's it from us. Goodbye.